It's actually been a couple of weeks since I painted this illustration. I've just been kind of lazy with editing, so I've been holding on to this footage for a little bit, but I'm very excited to share it with you guys because honestly, I think this is like my favorite piece of artwork that I've ever made, which is a concept that like makes me very happy. <laughs> For me personally, myself especially, I don't really like get that feeling a lot where it's like I make something and I'm really happy with it and I feel like it's the best thing I've ever made. So I was really happy upon finishing this piece and throughout the piece, honestly, it was just a lot of fun to do this illustration. So let's get into it. Uh, first things first, I'm using so many new supplies for myself. I recently discovered a local art store and I've been picking up a bunch of different kinds of watercolor paper. The one I used for this video is a Fabriano. It's a 25% cotton watercolor paper, which normally the higher percentage of cotton in the watercolor paper, the nicer it is. However, this paper has such a gorgeous texture that I have to pick it up. It was a really good price, honestly, for the pad that I got. And I really, really like working with this paper. I'm also using the Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils to do the line work for this illustration. I talked about them a little bit in my most recent video, but I also recently picked up a set of these guys and I absolutely love using them for colored line work for illustrations. It's something that I've wanted to do for a while and Prismacolors for me are the pencils that I kind of grew, not necessarily grew up using, but especially like late teenage years are the pencils that I ended up getting and they definitely worked for the time being but they just there were so many things that I did not like about the Prismacolors and I had constantly heard the Faber-Castell Polychromos being highly praised by so so many people so initially I started purchasing a couple here and there open stock and then I decided to cave and I got a set of 36 of them and they are so insanely nice. I really like using them for any kind of like watercolor or ink illustration just for the line work because even though I normally go over certain detail spots with a black gel pen at the end of the illustration anyways, I feel like it's so, so nice. It looks so nice and it's also very fun. So that's what I'm using for the baseline work of this piece. And then onto the actual medium I decided to use. Initially, I was very, very set on using watercolors for this piece. I was really happy with how the sketch turned out and I was very excited to paint this, but I kind of wanted to try inks again, which is something that I've played with here and there for the longest time, but I've never really stuck with it. And especially for painting characters, I've always really struggled with my skin tone mixes when it comes to inks, which is just something that I've needed to work on. But I decided to be a little brave with this illustration. And mind you, I didn't even scan it in, which is something I really should have done because I was so happy with the sketch and I was so happy with the line work. And if I mess this up with inks, that would have been really sad, uh, but I didn't even bother scanning it in. I just kind of went for it. And I used the Roar and Clinger inks, which I got from the Hykala art box a couple of years ago, I think it was. And I had so much fun using inks on this piece. It's medium, like I said, that I've just kind of dabbled in. I haven't really used for an extended period of time. And really, they're not like super different in terms of use from watercolors. So it's really not like it's this huge difference from what I'm really accustomed to, which is watercolors, but they do behave slightly differently and they do lay down differently. And I just had so much fun painting this piece. I think it turned out really, really nice. It's definitely not perfect, and uh, especially when it comes to skin tone mixes, I'm still trying to figure out how to do that well, because I feel like, especially with this piece specifically, um, this was really my first time putting a ton of effort into doing an ink piece and I started with the skin and I laid down like my initial flat washes and then I went into like going in with the darker skin tones for shading and blush and all that stuff and I really should have for this piece um saved at least the more like finished rendering of the skin until after I had painted other aspects of it. This painting isn't as bad as some of the other ones I've been doing with inks lately where I feel like I go really hard with the skin and I feel like when I lay down the other colors, it's going to accommodate that. And it definitely does a little bit, but the skin tone is always like way darker than I intended and also more cool tone than I intended, which is something that I've needed to do is mix blues into my skin tones, especially when it comes to inks, because the actual individual ink vials I have are like super highly saturated. And so especially when mixing darker tones, it just looks very, very wrong to have that. So I've been mixing blue in, but also something I noticed, especially on my last video, was that 
When I sped up the footage, it was very apparent that when the ink actually dried compared to when it was wet, it ended up drying a lot more like desaturated almost, but definitely leaning towards the cooler end of things. So now I know I also need to factor in, it's going to color shift a little bit when it dries. I don't know 100% if it was specifically the paper I was working on in my last video or what was going on with that, but there was definitely a color shift that kind of put into perspective, oh, this is also like contributing to why I'm not like 100% satisfied with the actual finished product of painting skin. But yeah, all of that to say, I just need to work on painting skin with inks more and get more accustomed to that. And I'm definitely not like beating myself up over it because it's a new medium that I'm working with and it's a medium that I'm not familiar with and paints that I'm not super familiar with, but I'm very excited to learn and be more comfortable with using inks because I think I've done four finished ink illustrations recently and I've just been having so much fun. This was the first one I did and I just like, this piece specifically has really made me fall in love with inks and I'm really looking forward to picking up some other colors of the Roar and Clinger inks because right now I do have a really good selection of them. The High Colour Box came with a nice like array of Roy G. Biv colors and it really sets you up for success with those. But there are definitely some shades that I would like to get because I found a website online that they're shipped from Europe, so shipping is like, I think 15 to $20 or something like that. But the individual bottles are around $3, so that's definitely not bad at all. And eventually I would like to pick up probably a good handful of colors, especially just to offset the percentage of the price I'm going to be paying directed towards shipping. So I'll just probably pick up a handful of other colors. That way I have more at my disposal and I don't have to work so hard to mix specific colors. But I'm very, very excited to continue using inks because so far they've been treating me really well and it's been very fun to work with them. As far as the actual painting for this piece goes, I really wanted to paint Chong Young and Xing Cho from Genshin Impact, especially after the Moonlight Merriment event because they interacted with each other and it was very cute and precious. So I really wanted to do an illustration of the two of them because Chong Young especially is one of my favorite Genshin characters. I love him very, very much. So I wanted to paint them together. I actually have not been playing Genshin like at all recently. I realized I was getting pretty burnt out with it because I was definitely getting into the headspace of I need to play every day so I can get all my daily stuff done and then feeling like I was missing out if I wasn't keeping up with the events that they were constantly releasing. So it took me a little bit of time to be able to be like, okay, I don't care. I'm not going to play it at all right now because I simply don't want to. And it also helps that Animal Crossing, the 2.0 update dropped and I have been playing so much Animal Crossing recently. It is absolutely insane. So I've just pretty much like stopped playing Genshin entirely. I'm not 100% burnt out on it, but I figured I needed to cut myself off from playing Genshin before I get to the point where I'm like super insanely burnt out with it. So switching over to Animal Crossing has been really enjoyable because Animal Crossing is also a game that I really burnt myself out with just because there's so many individual daily tasks that can kind of feel like a chore if you get in the mindset of you have to do them every day, which is something I did with New Leaf, which was the last Animal Crossing game, and then New Horizons when it came out. So I've been playing it again, and it has been so much fun. I restarted my island completely, and I, it's just been really fun with all like the new 2.0 stuff, and just being able to restart my island and build everything back up from like nothing. It's been very, very fun, and I've spent so much time on the game. Steven bought me the Happy Home Designer DLC, and that especially has been so much fun to play because I know I played Happy Home Designer on the DS when it came out, but I don't think I actually ended up playing it a lot because I feel like the Happy Home Designer being its own individual game can get kind of overwhelming just in the sense of like, the premise of Happy Home Designer is you make houses for characters and you customize houses for characters, but it generally takes a long time just to do one build and doing them back to back to back is very tiring and exhausting. So I don't think I progress that much in the game, but having Happy Home Designer be DLC on top of New Horizons is really nice because you can just decorate however many houses you're down for and then go back to your island and kind of do your own thing. So I've been having so much fun playing Animal Crossing. I know pretty much everyone else who has had Animal Crossing Crossing is also playing it right now just because the update is fantastic and there's so much new content. I'm also low-key trying to get my fix of Animal Crossing right now and just get it out of the way because the remakes of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl come out in just a little bit over a week and those are games that I have been super insanely hyped for because 
Diamond was actually my very first Pokemon game, so it's very sentimental to me. The entire Sinnoh generation is super sentimental. So Diamond and Pearl are coming out in just over a week, and then Legends Arceus is going to be coming out in like two months. So I have a lot of Nintendo games that I'm going to be playing for the time being, so I'm desperately trying to like achieve my goals in Animal Crossing, and mind you, I'm having a lot of fun, that's for sure. At this point, I don't even bat an eye at playing Animal Crossing for like eight hours a day. That's just my normal right now, and I'm absolutely enjoying it. But I know when Diamond and Pearl comes out, I'm going to want to play Diamond immediately, and I just don't know how I'm going to be balancing all these Nintendo games, but that's what I'm going to be doing with a majority of my free time for the next couple of months, because all of these games are things I'm immensely hyped for, and I'm so excited to play Diamond, and also like slightly more excited to play Legends Arceus, because the Diamond remake, while I am so excited that they did a Diamond remake, I, along with many, many other people, do know it is quite ugly. Definitely not a fan of like the chibi style and just turning the original 2D graphics into like 3D graphics, but then like ugly. But at the same time, like, I don't care if they gave us a remake, I can play the game on my Switch. And on top of that, one of like my favorite features of all time from Pokemon games is the option for your party Pokemon to walk behind you, and they're giving that to us in Diamond and Pearl. So that in of itself, I'm immensely grateful and I will very happily give Nintendo $60 so I can play this game again. So yeah, those are my plans for the foreseeable future. I'm desperately also trying to like balance playing Animal Crossing with doing other things in life, like making YouTube videos, for example, because right now I would really love to be playing Animal Crossing, but I would like to also make a YouTube video, so we're balancing it. And we're doing a pretty good job because I'm sitting here right now recording a voiceover. <laughs> I know a lot of other people are playing Animal Crossing right now, so if you're also hyped about Animal Crossing and playing it right now, let me know. Let me know how you guys are enjoying the 2.0 update because, like I said, I am having a fantastic time with it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.